Hello and welcome back to the Bonneville. It's been a while since I've been able to work on this. Last thing I did was kind of detailed up. I put a little uh, Stetson in there to kind of give it, you know, the like grandpa smell in a way. So, you know, you open the door, you kind of got that smell. A little musky, a little Stetson, you know, whatever. Now it's time to start really getting to work on this. And, let's see, it's been sitting a while. And honestly, I want to change the oil first because I changed the intake. I ain't got to worry about a valley or anything dropping in there, getting any oil. Don't have to worry about that. I'm not changing valve covers. Only thing I'm changing is distributor. So first thing I want to do is put some fresh, clean oil in there with some zinc additive. Now I've already added some zinc additive and let it run while I, when I first got this. Well, at least it's in there. I don't know if they've added any, but do the oil change again to make sure it's in there. So, I'm going to start getting ready for the oil change. Which I'm going to go ahead and get the exhaust out of the way for that. You know, filters here, the exhaust run under it. Might as well just uh, make it easier. But in all reality, I got some exhaust pipe. I'm going to build a new exhaust for this anyway. Because it's a single pipe car. It's got the dual hump crossover in it, so I can easily put dual exhaust. And that's the plan later but I just want to go ahead and cut the exhaust off right now and get that out of my way because I really want to hear what it sounds like even though it's a two barrel still hear what it sounds like open headed I'll let it warm up a little bit before I change the oil before I start cutting uh, it's dark right here let's see what we got here oh. There's that cracked white pipe anyway, so it's got to go. I was kind of hoping uh, it didn't tee like that and maybe elbowed more, but you know, whatever. We will get rid of that, and then, uh, well, yeah, see there's a filter. It's one of those nasty things too. Yeah, I want to get rid of that because we're going to build a new exhaust anyway. It's no wonder it didn't sound that great. That thing is cracked all the way around. Probably original. Tailpipe didn't matter, but uh, some gnarly holes there. Almost looks like a weird face. Either flattened and crunched. I might try to save that and make the pipes and that end where they kind of elbow down and then put all the new behind it. Try to save some money on this build. There's our axle over, which I got some new ones already. And yeah. I said they missed going into it a lot and coming out of it a lot. Uh. See what it sounds like without the crappy exhaust. Probably been a couple months. I started it last, maybe a month and a half.
And fortunately I dropped it. Oh well. That that oil is pretty pretty crude and black looking. So uh yeah, I think uh I think it's due. I do. Look at that. Now I don't know what they ran before, but judging by the inside of that orange filter, well, it's pretty sludgy. I put a different filter on it and uh, filled up with mold. The zinc additive in there ought to run better because that thing has some sludge in the bottom of that filter. I guarantee you we're going to need to do a couple changes to make it nice again on the inside. About a thousand mile run change, thousand mile run change or something, but right now, judging by the way that old looked, fresh old change, it ought to feel a lot better. It does have some 91 in it now. I put about six or seven gallons of 91 in it. And uh, fresher gas and probably what was in there, so. Crawling up under the car, well, there's a pinch in the middle line on the fuel line coming up to the carburetor. And uh, a few other things I'd want to fix later. Not right now, that's not until I do the four barrel, putting the four barrel on there, but yeah. Get this thing topped off here and let it run for a minute. Well, let's see if I can get the strain plug undone and go to the next thing, which is the radiator. Because, well, I got a big old radiator in my way and uh, like to move it. Make some space again. Ah, there's so much cramp stuff right here in the way. I don't know what that is, but we'll figure that out later. They may got to go underneath. That might be easier. Well, I guess it's time for plan B because that thing is not... Oh, really? They put the screw-on clamps on here. Cool, you know, I can just... Speak, 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 done. That one's pointed up. That one's pointed up. That one's pointed up, that one's pointed down. I gotta crawl up under the car again. I really don't wanna do that on this one because you know, fluids and all that are probably still warm. Yeah, find something to lay on. Oh, this is not gonna be good. Started leaking quick and it's hot. Well, warm. Well, it kind of didn't, but you know, I did the best I could. Oh, yeah, the fluid in the car is still pretty warm, too. I can see it steaming a little bit. I don't want to pull that clutch fan, so let's see if I can just yes, I hear you. Well, hmm. I guess I gotta take those off. Oh boy. Well, I take, well, the clutch is, let's just face it, shot. As well as the radiator. But, uh, yeah, well, son of a. Alright.
worrying about damaging this one. So why am I stuck? Now that fence rail is actually pretty decent except for one flaw. And that is the fact that I guess sometime of the year someone leaned on it and cracked it, you know, working on the engine. Pretty calm. Checking down here, this don't look too bad. Pretty clean looking down here. So I pretty much go ahead and Looks like I can just drop the new radiator in. Now I'm going to try this with the shroud on. Because these side tanks are a little bit larger. So I should, keyword should be okay, to drop it straight in. Make sure that's good and tight. Don't want no leaks. I'm leaving all the plugs in for now. Let's see if I can't just slide this one in there a little Yeah. Yeah, a lot easier. And, well, of course this is, moved. there we go. Yep, that rubber mount moved on me. Go figure. Nope. There we go. Kind of. I guess that's it. That's weird. Yeah, there we go. It does sit a hair bit lower. Like, well, maybe not. Shrouds. Now, since this is an aftermarket, it doesn't fit exactly the same. That's why, of course, you know, I had to cut a little off, move the holes a little bit to pull it back, some tighten it down on the, the rubber bushings, the mounts. And uh, yeah, that one is kind of a pain with the pressure in the way, anyway. For now, get the go we'll get the new lower hose, put it on, get the up. Ooh. Well, I have to move my transmission line a little bit for the upper because it's uh, about two inches lower. Great. I knew I'd run into some trouble with the new radiator because you know it's not stock, but uh, the old holes that came off is a little bit different than the new one that Summit showed me. And so now the issue is um, quite a bit short here. And the original one, worn out, let's see if it reaches. I thought, yeah, get that on there. And technically I'm still kind of short a little bit, not as bad pull the radiator out but I'm just gonna have to go find me a different hose for it later this one's still a good hose I'll keep it but yeah that's that's where that that went so I guess I could hook the transmission lines back up real quick again I'm not gonna put that hose on because I'm changing out the intake no point so yeah well get these transmissions lines on that might be a good stopping point for today i decided to check the upper hose well extra the other one's short this one's extra <laughs> ah, just my luck oh well that's fine at least i know i can use this one because it's got plenty extra room so there's that at least
Well, head in the right direction. At least the radiator will be better because you see that one wasn't in good shape. You can see where it's been leaking. So, it had a big dent in the reservoir on one side. It's weird. But that's probably going to be a problem spot later on in the future. So, nipping the bud now, get rid of it. Same thing with the hoses. But, uh, yeah. Not really dirt worried about doing brakes, even though that's the biggest problem on this car. For the simple fact that, uh, if it ain't running right anyway, there ain't no point even going. So, brakes be one of the last things I do, especially since I need to run. It'd be easier to, you know, believe the brakes was running and running right. Get enough vacuum where I can push the pedal, you know, that good stuff. So, get it running right, fix the brakes. Still gonna find a carburetor. Wanna find a quarter jet. Trying to find one local. I don't wanna give up one of my cores I have because, well, they're off GTOs and I'd like to keep them. So, they're off my GTOs. And some other ones that my dad had, but they're kind of the special ones. So, yeah, now get the hoses. The, the, the coolant reservoir overflow is actually all busted, the original, unfortunately. I had to find an aftermarket one to plumb in, get that lower hose, something that'll work. Plugs, plug wire distributor, intake, carburetor, exhaust, brakes, and we're good. Unfortunately, I noticed that these, uh, I knew these tires on this thing were bad. Uh, that one's actually, the, the tread's coming off and the wire's under, it's like just starting to peel and separate. It's trying to stay in budget and not do that now. But, uh, either have the tires or find a different set of wheels and tires. I'd like to find a different set, but it is what it is. I'll see what I come up with. Hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, thanks for watching.